Welcome everybody. This video is about merging parcels. I will take my time and show different use cases of merging parcels and those are important for the understanding of how the parcel fabric works. So with that said, let's get going. These are the use cases for merging parcels. So the first one is the obvious one. You select parcels A and B, the parent parcels, and you create a new merge parcel, parcel C from those two or more. Then the second one is also record driven. You merge smaller parcels into a bigger parcel. In that case, we don't want to create a parcel lineage and we'll see the use cases for that. Another one is quality driven. You, not, you notice a sliver somewhere and you just want to fix that into the real parcel. So you're basically getting rid of the sliver parcel, the small one, without creating a small gap there. And the less common workflows are when you merge non-adjacent parcels. For example, uh, two parcels on opposite side of the road, for example, and create a multi-part feature, a multi-part polygon, which is a multi-part parcel. And another less common one is merging overlapping parcels, um, and we'll see those as well. So let's talk about the first use case and why don't we start with a demo so i'll switch to arcgis pro and here we see two parcels a and b and they use um, metric area units so one has a thousand square meters the second parcel is exactly the same size but a thousand square meters is a tenth of a hectare so it uses different units of legal areas those are the legal stated area fields and the first step of course is to create a legal record so we are going to create the merge legal record and we're going to use the same legal record for all the demos now so once we have the active record in order to merge those two parcels all we have to do is select them press merge give the new parcel a new name let's call it c and press the merge button so as you can see, the two parcels were combined into parcel C. The new legal area of those two parcels is now 2,000 square meters. It's using square meters because those are the default area units defined in the project option settings. Okay, so if you go to units here, to the area units, whatever is defined here is the unit that will be set when you merge the area unit set when you merge parcels. Did we get any historic parcels? Yes, we did. So if we look at the historic parcels, let's turn off those two, we'll see that the historic parcels are maintained, A and B. Let's turn off the parcels. We also have an historic boundary. What makes something historic is very simple. And that ties to the lineage. An historic feature or whether it's a boundary or a polygon has a retired by record id in this case it's the merge the merge record that retired this boundary and the same would be applicable for any of the parcels it's the same record that retired those two another thing that happened behind the scenes is that the record geometry got updated so um, that record geometry is also there and there's actually two overlapping records here the one that created this sample data and the second one that now merged those two parcels so that was use case number one let's go back to the slides so um, I'll just leave here so we can see that any selected parcels become historic they are considered the parent parcel and the new child parcel, there's always one with merge, is now um, has the stated area combined from the stated areas of the parent uh, parcels. And um, we have the parcel lineage maintained. Let's see another common workflow. In this case, we are merging little parcels into a bigger one. Common use cases for that is something like a subdivision, lots and right of ways into the subdivision boundary. It could be the quarter sections of um, the public land survey system into the section or 
merging sections into townships. So it's basically dissolving upwards in hierarchy. And you might have different um, use cases for that. In that case, there is no parcel lineage. There's no parcel lineage between different parcel types. All we do is use the little parts to create the bigger part. We use them um, as a geometry building blocks. So let's see a demo of that. Um, let's move to the pr right pro session. Sorry about that. Here we go. And we'll go to the next use case here. So here we have little parcels and we want to combine them into a bigger parcel. So all we have to do is select them, hit the merge button, and instead of selecting parcel, let's select the big parcel, which is in our purple, you can see here, bigger parcels, and we'll give it a name, maybe it's a subdivision, subdivision ABC, and press merge. So in this case, we are getting the new parcel boundary. If we turn those off, you'll see that's the only feature. Those, um, if we turn off the big parcels now, you'll see that the smaller parcels are still intact. Nothing happened to them. They did not become historic. So there was an easy way basically to create the big subdivision boundary that is the combination, the dissolving of all those little parcel parts. Let's go back to the slides and go to another common use case. Sometimes we have little slivers, though those are not supposed to be there, artifacts from, um, from legacy processes. And we want to get rid of them. If we just delete that sliver parcel, we'll get a small gap. And we are not interested in that. So what we do is we merge into an existing feature and we preserve the parcel attributes that we want to preserve. In this case, one is just the object ID and the other one is the real parcel. So we pr choose to preserve parcel A and then we don't get any parcel lineage. So that's a quality driven workflow, just fixing data. Let's see how that would um, look like. So we'll go into another bookmark here. And from this scale, it's hard to see, but there's a small sliver here. So I'll zoom to that sliver and you can see there's a small little gap here. So that's a one parcel and that's another one. So in order to merge those two, you just select the two. And on the merge dialog, I'm going to choose merge into existing feature. And I have the choice. Do I want to preserve the attributes of parcel 20 or parcel A? So I'm going to click on parcel A. That's the real parcel, the big one. And you can see it's flickering there and then say merge. And now the sliver is gone and I have parcel A attributes maintained. So that was another use case of merging parcels. The next use case is less common, is when you have two or more parcels that have to become a multi-part parcel. So that's a multi-part geometry. In this case, for example, two parcels on two sides, opposite um, sides of the road. Uh, maybe that's that could be a result sometimes of actually clipping something out, like an easement or something out of a parcel. But in this case, we are just going to create a new multi-part parcel. And you have to ask yourself this question. Do you want to track parcel lineage on that or not? If you do want to track lineage, if parcel A and B get a new number, a new parcel name, then you want to merge them into a new feature that will create a parcel C with A and B becoming historic. If you don't want to make um, parcel A and B historic, then you did the same workflow with a sliver. You basically merge them into existing features. So let's have a look how that looks. The next bookmark here. And we can see we have two overlap. Uh, sorry, that's the th the fourth one, so we'll move into this one. Um, here we have the two parcels. All we have to do is select them. We are going to merge into an existing feature. We're going to call it parcel C and just merge those two. And you can see those have been merged. Of course, in all those use cases, we have history if we uh, merge into a, a new feature. So we turn it off. Now, if I select any of the parcels here, you can see also that they get the other part also gets selected because that's the nature of multi-part features. 
it's one feature with many parts uh, so selection applies to both so that's uh, the less common workflow and let's look at the last use case which is an overlapping parcels again this is not common maybe more with easements and so on um, usually there's no legal areas associated to those be aware that even though there's um, an overlap the legal areas are still summed up into the new one so let's see how that would look like um, that's the last example here so we have here a circle parcel and a square parcel and you can see obviously that they are overlapping the workflow is identical we select them both i'll give it a new name parcel c and merge the two and they got merged and you can see there's no boundary in here between them while maintaining of course the historic information so those were the most common <laughs> less common and more common um, workflow for merging uh, parcels and i hope you enjoyed it uh, leave a like if you liked it thank you